One becomes the majority when they are with God. May you have a restored communion with God. Stop running after things. Run after God. Be still and know that I'm God. Be still. And when you are then still, you say, I will be exalted among the nations. Truth is, it's a person. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth. And it's a person which is anointing him and restored communion with him. That truth becomes a reality in our lives. Truth is not based on head knowledge. Truth is a revelation of Jesus himself, who is the truth. I come against everything that have intimidated you because you will rise to a new height of grace and glory in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The sound that you are waiting to hear The sound oh, that you will use Oh God, to break your people through So will I Personal communion with God. The restoration of work, your personal communion with God. Because there is so much power, there is so much that we see God do when our own personal communion is restored to Him. And I believe that this morning that God will bring you to that place of Bible said there remain it yet rest for the people of God wherein you cease from your own labor and you enter into his own favor Amen. you didn't hear what I say say it with me I will cease from my own labor I will enter into his own favor God walked for six days on the seventh day he rested and he invites us to come into that place of rest. The place of rest is not a place wherein we are not walking as we know work. It's just a place wherein God is at work. And you are trusting him. And you are believing him. And you are obeying him. And you see him do what he knows best to do. And it takes you coming to that place of restored communion with him. Open your Bible with me to Psalm 27, verse 4 to verse 8. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, 
to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing. Yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Verse 7. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. Somebody say amen. I put here, there is much going on around on and around us in our lives that prevents us from experiencing genuine communion with God. Living a fast pace, living in a fast paced society with endless demands and countless opportunities can mean that slowing down to commune with God it's an impossible task. Sometimes it feels that way when you have to attend to this, attend to that, and think about this and think, and you are wondering, I don't even have time with God again. Why? Because Satan's strategy is to steal, to kill, and destroy our time of communion. The devil is not after our money. No, it's not after money. It's not after our It's after your communion with God. That's why David said, one thing I desire. He didn't say silver. He didn't say gold. One thing I desire. And that will I seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord. That talk is about have a communion with God. One thing I desire wasn't all the things everyone is, is running crazy for. So communion with God is a deep need for every human life on the earth whether we acknowledge the need for it or not that's the most important and i was thinking over the past few days a follow-up to what pastor Akin shared on on friday about the restoration of god's kingdom and i say it ties in very well with communion with him and i'm glad i'm sharing this message not on the day we have communion as we know communion because communion is not only just when we partake of the elements of communion. That's good, but that's not all communion is. Because whether there's bread or wine, you can have an ongoing communion with God the Father, with God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So David was more like saying, this is the one thing I seek. This is one thing I desire, and not only desire, he said, that will I seek. That ties in with Matthew 6, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things. So David said, I do not only desire it, but I seek it. Tell neighbor, how bad do you want it? Sad to say that today, people don't need this badly there are other things we badly need and god is saying that is not if there's anything to badly need is to badly need your communion with god go back to that scripture i, I read earlier on in uh, psalm 27 verse verse 4 it's the one thing i have desired of the lord uh-huh uh-huh. Uh-huh. Once in a week. All the days of my life. Where is the scripture? When? To do what? To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his death. Let me show you the secret to a beautified life. Is communion with God. 
You cannot commune with him and behold his beauty and you look ugly. You cannot behold his beauty and look ugly. Ugliness shall be far from your lives. You can't be all this beauty. It is that beauty of the Lord that is upon your life. The scepters are turned towards you. It wasn't the beauty of Esther that made that scepter to be stretched towards her by the king. It was after she took time to wait on the Lord in prayer and fasting. And she showed up. Because she knew if I show up with my own ugliness, I die. She went into a time of prayer, seeking the face of God. You can't seek his face and you look ugly. She came from that place of seeking the Lord and she showed up. And the king looked at her and said, whoa, man. What do you want to the half of my kingdom? In the place of debt, she received wealth. She received favor. That I may behold this beauty. I challenge you. Many of you will be having some interviews in the next couple of months. And they have not just interviewed for job only. Even for some positions that they will call you you didn't apply for. May you go with the beauty of God. How about showing up for an interview and they see you and they just chat with you. They didn't ask questions. They said, interview is finished. You have the position. That's what beauty does. See, I receive. I receive it. I receive it. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Our communion with God is grounded in our commitment to his holy written word. You can't really make anyone read the Bible if they are not hungry for a communion with him. All my children over the years knows me. I don't read the Bible because I'm a pastor. This is my life. This is my life. This is my life. It's one book you will never fully grabs until you see him face to face. So there has to be an ongoing passion, hunger, and restored communion with him. But that only comes when you have a commitment. It's a commitment. And that is one thing missing in the life of many today. People are no longer committed. There has to be a Commitment. Commitment. Give me Psalm 119, verse 9 to verse 11. Psalm 119. Quickly, from verse 9 to verse 11. Read everybody, go on. Are we in church? One, two, three, go. Yeah. Cleanse this way, uh huh. By taking it according to your word. With my whole heart, I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandment. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. Your word. Your word I have hidden in my heart. Let's train our children to read the Bible. Read the Bible to them. My youngest son is in the church this morning. Growing up as a young boy in those days, I read the Bible to him every night. I'll give him some of the challenge and say, if you can read this portion of the Bible for this X, I'll give you 10 pounds. Stand up, Pastor Emmanuel. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. That's the big man there. Stand up. Sit down now. Pastor Emmanuel. And in those days, he loved to be called pastor. We ask him, what does a pastor do? He so wear a suit and read the Bible. <laughs> and, then, and then carry the beef, please. Carry the beef, please. You can't miss it. 
10,000 Samuel comes wrong from God. Train them to read the Bible. Even if they grow up and they will return back to the Bible. Say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. Excuse me. You have to be. This thing, you think this man praying today just happened just like that? There was a praying mother who was declaring over my life, even when I was not even born again. I didn't ask you from the tree. I didn't ask you from the stone. It's God I asked you from. God you will serve. That never stopped ringing in my ears. Those are words. Don't look at your children where they are. Look at your children with the eyes of where God is taking them. None will miss their destiny. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Our communion with God can be strengthened and restored by, cons by consistently praying in the Spirit. It can be restored. Don't, don't make prayer an option. If you don't feel like praying, force yourself to pray. Tell if you don't feel like praying, force yourself to pray. You got to. If you don't feel like reading the Bible, force yourself to read it. You have to. If you wait for you to feel like it, it won't happen. You think I feel like it every day? But that communion is strengthened and restored by consistently praying in the Spirit. When you step out to start praying in tongues, many times it doesn't even make sense. I mean, who told you to make sense? But just start anyway. It's a mystery. I like the way the message translation puts that scripture. Give me the uh, message translation of uh, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1 to verse 2. As we round up this service. Because this is my personal fellowship with my family this morning. I'm not preaching. I'm sharing what is the heartbeat of God. And that is the heartbeat of God that informs my life. Read everybody. Go on. Go after a life of love as if your life depended on it. Because it does. Give yourselves to the gifts God gives you. Most of all, try to proclaim his truth. If you praise him in the private language of tongues, God understands you, but no one else does. For you are sharing in... in, in Oh, someone's just sharing intimacies just between you and him. Can you imagine sharing intimacy with Papa God? Sharing intimacy. That is communion. When you are praying in tongues, you are praying in the spirit. He said, God understands you, but no one else does. For you are sharing intimacies just between you and him. Can you imagine sharing intimacy with your heavenly father? And he will not reveal truths and things to you. He will not reveal. Bible said there was a river that, that came out of the Eden. And the river parted. And then it was one river that revealed gold. In the book of Genesis, gold was revealed by the river that parted into foreheads and showed the passion. And then gold was in that garden. But it took a river that was moving to show where gold, gold was in the garden. Can you imagine God's word says, At he that believeth in me, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Can you imagine this river is flowing and is revealing gold to you? Is revealing opportunities to you. Hear me. That is the secret of my life. Whatever I've seen God give to me came from the place of prayer when he showed it in the prayer. Both personal and this ministry. It is in that river that is flowing that he will show you. How do you stand? You're praying, you're praying and God says, serve them quick notice. The church building I've given you. 
We were a few people in the prayer meeting. But the river was moving and the river was showing me. He said, there is a building I've given you. But the occupants sat them quick notice. That was the land. That building we bought at Oak End Road came from that. That's why by the time that building was acquired and we needed money, to, he said, don't raise no fund. Don't do no fundraising. I will move upon the heart of those who are prepared. It's on record. How do you do that with few people? No. One becomes a majority when they are with God. May you have a restored communion with God. Stop running after things. Run after God. Run after him. Run after him. I come against everything that has intimidated you. Because you will rise to a new height of grace and glory. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hear me. Bigger than Bill Gates is in this church. If you will understand what I'm saying to you today. How you didn't buy, you didn't build, God said, I'll give you. Via, you didn't plan, I'll give you. How does that happen in the place of communion? Communion. 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 Oh, Rabakata. Communion. 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 In that place of communion, you'll, you'll be digging, you'll be digging, it to look as if nothing has happened. Just keep on digging. Just like you see all those oil wells that push out. It came from the place of digging, 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 drilling, 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 drilling. And suddenly they eat a gusher. May you eat a spiritual gusher. A gusher. Say gusher. But the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. It is in that place God will show you opportunities. You will open your eyes to see. You will know where to invest. You will know where not to invest. You will know where, you will know where to go. You will know where not to go. That's why David said, one thing I have desired. That will I seek after. The guy knew the secrets. To great heights and great wealth and great prosperity. He's not seeking prosperity. He's seeking God. Clap your hand and give him praise this morning. For the rest of this year and beyond. I challenge you. To prioritize your personal communion with God. You never need to tell a man to give offering, give tithe, give. It's if people miss communion with him, they will, because communion simply means common union with God. You are in common union, communion, common union with God. Can you imagine being in common union with God? I tell you, that's what I want you to give. That's what I want you to keep. That's why I want you to invest. Because you are in common union with him. May we never live our life in isolation. Amen. Be expectant to see God show you great and mighty thing that you don't know from the place of restored communion. That place of communion will bring you to the place wherein you will be still to know that he is God. And this is the last verse that the Spirit of the Lord gave me before I went to bed. I heard him. Be still and know. That I am God. Give me that scripture. Stand up on your feet as we look at that and we just pray this afternoon. Someone say a restored communion with God. Go on. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Can you imagine God saying, be still. It's almost, calm down. No. It's almost like saying, you can't know until you. You can't know until you. Tell about calm down. Be still. And know that I'm God. Be still. And when you are then still, you say, I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. 
that phrase, be still and know I'm God, calls us to take time to pause and reflect. It reminds us that God is still in control no matter what happens in our lives. He's still. May today mark the beginning of the restoration of your personal communion with God. Amen. Lift your two hands and say, Father, this morning I receive a restoration of my personal communion with you. Praise the Lord. What a great joy to bring you this message today. I trust that God spoke to your heart and I believe that the word of God you've heard will profit you, will prosper you, and will perfect all that concerns you in Jesus' name. For those who have not given their heart to Jesus, I want to challenge you to open the door of your heart to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior by praying this simple prayer with me. Dear God, I come to you today just as I am, a sinner in need of a Savior. Save me now. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ, you are my Lord, you are my Savior. I believe in my heart that you died for my sin. You were buried. But on the third day, God raised you up from the dead. Therefore, I am saved. You know, as simple as that prayer may sound, if you pray it from your heart, guess what? God heard you and you are saved. So I rejoice with you for this new beginning. I want to encourage you to find a good Bible-believing church where you can be nurtured and you can be helped in your work with God. If there's any way I can be of any assistance to you, please feel free to write me or contact the number on the screen and it will be my pleasure to respond to you. Well, until next time when I come into your home, you keep on winning because God is on your side. You are destined to win.